Hi folks, today's video is a wrap up of the books that I read in December. The first one was Ali Smith's Winter, which was great, but I read it far too fast, so I missed a lot of the nuance, and that's because we were reading it for book club, and I kind of forgot that I was in a book club, and yeah, then I was reminded and had to very, very quickly read it, so I sped it up on the audiobook, which is not a good idea with Ali Smith's work. I mean, I feel like I, I got quite a lot of it on the surface, but there was so much going on underneath the surface. So. I recently watched Jen Campbell's video about this book and realised that I missed an awful lot, so I may have to go back and revisit it at some point. Um, I did really enjoy it and there was a lot to talk about at Book Club, but yeah, just, yeah, the underlying stuff there was kind of glossed over in the fact that I was reading it, listening to it too quickly. Anyway, great book recommended. If you want a better review, go and watch Jen's. I will link it below. Then I read this one here, A Gathering of Shadows. It's the second book in the Dark Shade of Magic trilogy by V.E. Schwab. The first one I read about two years ago and I actually reread the first one because I couldn't remember much of what happens beyond the fact that there are these different Londons and it's, it's a bit like Neil Gaiman's Neverwhere but I think better. I prefer these books. Sorry, Neil Gaiman. But there's Red London, and there is Grey London, and there is White London, and then once upon a time there was Black London, but alas, it is lost. So, a bit of a mystery going on there. This is the second book, as I said, and it follows on from the first. It is about four months after the events of the first book, and oh, there's some great characters in this. So the main character is called Kel and he is an Antari and Antari are able to move between these different worlds. So Kel is a, a little bit of a rebel, not a huge rebel but a bit of a rebel. He smuggles things between these different Londons so that is a lot of what sort of triggers things in the first book but yeah, obviously don't read this unless you've read the first, but yeah, they're good. I'm reading the third one at the moment and thoroughly enjoying it. So then I read Sealskin by Sue Briscoe and I listened to the audiobook of this. It's great. It's got a Scottish narrator. It's wonderful. And it is set in Scotland, hence the Scottish narrator. Now this is based on the Selkie myth, which is a story where seals would come to the shore and shed their skins and become very beautiful women and like sirens and mermaids they would lure in unexpecting men and have their way with them. So this is about that happening and the man who sees them and steals one of their skins which means that she can't change back into a seal. And it's about what happens following that. Yeah this character is, uh, the main character is not particularly nice, certainly not at the beginning. We do see him go through a, a big development, um, but yeah, he takes this woman home and he ends up marrying her. It's about their lives and how they <laughs> develop and the secret of the seal skin, hence the name. Um, so yeah, there are some twists and turns in this, um, some unexpected things happen. Um, so it is a, a take on the Selkie myth. Yeah, uh, if you're interested in Scotland and myth and folktale, then this is a great read. And I, I really liked the setting of it. And it felt like it was outside of time as well. There, there aren't any references to technology, really. So I imagine that it's probably set towards the end of the 19th century, but it could almost be set today and just be in a very remote place with no internet or mobile phones. But that's part of its charm and appeal. It's got that folktale outside of time kind of feel to it. Okay, then I listened to the audiobook of A Fortunate Life by A.B. Facey, which is not a book that I normally would have picked up, but this was for a project, which I'm not sure if I can talk about yet or not, but when I can, I will. Um, so this is an Australian classic. It is an um, autobiography, a memoir, by A.B. Facey, who is very very famous in the um, in the Perth Fremantle area of Australia, and so it's about his life growing up from a boy right through 
his life. So really does take us from, from the beginning to, to the end. And my goodness, did he have an interesting life. Very, very interesting. Um, you, you, all these twists and turns that happen throughout the, the book and especially when he was a child and working on farms in the outback of Australia. Very, very interesting. Yeah, sometimes fact is stranger than fiction, as they say. Then the next book was The Spa Short Affair by Alan Hollinghurst. Now, I've read another book by Alan Hollinghurst ages ago, which was The Line of Beauty, and I read it at university. I studied it, it was very interesting. This one is set, at least at the beginning, in the 1940s, during the Blitz in Oxford, not in London. So that was an interesting take on that time because most books set during that time um, in that area are set in London, in the, the Blitz itself. But this was in Oxford. I love reading about books in Oxford. And it's about a group of friends, mostly male, who see another man across the street through his window just before the blackout blinds go down. And they become a bit obsessed, just a little bit obsessed with this man, and they form a, a wager, have a competition to see who can woo this man first. Um, so there are two of, two of them in this, and our narrator is the innocent by bystander to this, but he also manages to get himself all tangled up in, into this whole thing as well. So he labels what is going on and what he's observing, the spartial affair, which is only one way of interpreting that particular phrase, which is also the title of the book. Um, but you see that come through and through throughout the book because it's not all set in 1940s in Oxford. Sadly, I, I do love that time period and that setting. But after that, we skip forward to when um, Sparsholt has a son and it is about his son and the influences that his father has had on him and the influences that the events of the Sparsholt affair um, in Oxford have on him throughout his life and it follows him throughout pretty much the rest of the book. But we also come back to these different characters throughout as well um, who were involved in the original part of the book. His son is gay and it is about the, um, the implications of that and also about how people saw homosexuality throughout the century and it, it's a, quite a good chronicle of that I would say um, from, from the 1940s right through to the present day. and those social um, norms and how acceptable being being gay was has a huge effect on both Sparsholt and his, th that, those group of people at the beginning and also Sparsholt's son. So it's a great book, really good. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I really like Alan Harlinghurst's writing, also the time period and the change over time was really interesting. The next book is set in the 1930s and it's a Persephone classic. I listened to the audiobook, highly recommend that. It is very well narrated. This is Cheerful Weather for the Wedding by Julia Strachey. And this is a very short little novella and it's about a woman who's about to get married, hence the wedding bit. And maybe she doesn't want to get married. Uh, we're not sure. She's you know, drinking rum up in her room on her wedding morning. Not really a good sign. And then her ex turns up. <gasps> all the drama. And I mean, that's not even all of the drama. A lot of the drama is caused by her family who are just bonkers. But brilliantly funny. Very funny. Um, this has been made into a film as well. And if you want to see all the glorious costumes, oh, there are some, some a wonderful little shirt that Felicity Jones wears with little high-waisted shorts. And oh, I just want to find some fabric like that and, and make it. It's all very beautiful as a film. It's a, it's a good, fun little read, I would say, that if you want to just read something short during that period as well. Love the 1930s in literature. Um, yeah, really funny, also quite sad, quite depressing, but largely funny book. Then we had Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney, and this was published in 2017 in summer in the UK. And it was a debut novel. It is about two friends, two millennial friends, and they are called Bobby and Francis. 
interestingly, both names can be male names or female names. Both of them are women and they were lovers back when they were in high school. They are no longer lovers, they are now just friends. As friends, meet this other couple who are a lot older and Bobby becomes quite obsessed with the woman and Francis becomes quite obsessed with the man and intrigue ensues. Um, Francis ends up having an affair with this older man and it's about the secrets and lies and how that affects their lives and the lives of the people around them. So yeah, it's quite a, um, it's not like momentous events happening, it's quite quiet in that sense, but lots of interesting conversations as you would expect from a book called Conversations with Friends and yeah the dynamic between the different characters and also going across both of these couples um, it's really really interesting. The only combination we don't really see is the, the man and wife talking to each other much um, because they have to be observed by the other and Francis is our narrator taking us through this journey. The next book is also about a man and his wife Peter and Rebecca and this is by Michael Cunningham and it's called By Nightfall. Now I read another book by Michael Cunningham a while back called The Hours and it is a wonderful wonderful book. If you haven't read any Michael Cunningham start with that because it is brilliant but this is also very good. I did enjoy it. So it's about this man and his wife and you know, I, I say the man and his wife because it's from his perspective. He is an art dealer and one day this mysterious man, no he's not a mysterious man, <laughs> he is the brother of Rebecca, turns up pretty much on their doorstep. Uh, I think he does call first but he's had some issues with drugs and he's supposedly now a reformed drug, drug addict. He comes to stay with them for a while and Oh, chaos ensues. So he, he throws many spanners into the works of their lives. And oh, there's lies and there are deceptions. And oh, yep, it's it's very interesting. Um, I like the way that this book talked about art as well um, and talked about the art world. It was very engaging, unlike some books that I read about art and the art world, which just makes it sound oh, awful. Um, this does make it sound awful, but in a good way? I don't know, at least in an interesting way. I don't want to give too much away. Uh, I, there's, there's more that I could say but it'll, it'll give away the fun of it so I'm gonna stop there but it is very good. The penultimate book that I read in December and in 2017 was The Gustav Sonata by Rose Tremaine. It was so good. Oh it was wonderful. Now I wish that I'd read this before I filmed my favourites of 2017 video because it would have made it onto that list. It would have made 10, 11 but alas I read it after that. So it makes it onto the list but not onto the video but you're hearing it now. The Gustav Sonata by Rose Tremaine was brilliant. I could talk about this book a lot. I will try and keep it short and sweet here though. Uh, the structure of this novel is a bit like a sonata. It has three movements if you like. So the first section, movement, is set during the late 1940s in Switzerland. It's just after the Second World War, remembering that Switzerland was neutral during the war and that has a big effect on the characters in this novel. So it's about Gustav who meets Anton who is a boy of his age. Anton has just moved here he's, he's quite upset when he gets to school and Gustav manages to kind of calm him down and they become friends and it's about their lovely friendship. They go ice skating and Anton plays the piano which is lovely. Uh, Gustav's mother doesn't like Anton and we find out that Anton is Jewish and that may have something to do with it. So the second section is during the war and just before the war. So this is about Gustav's mother and his father who is absent during the first section of the book and we find out how they fell in love, how they came to be married and, and it explains how some of the prejudices that crept into the first section developed and oh there's, there's mystery and intrigue and and deception and lies. Oh, it's 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 wonderful. 
um, there are some really great characters in this section as well who also some of them turn up in the third section which kind of brings it all together um, so that takes us forward right until the present day and it, it pretty much spans the lives of these characters or the the characters um the character of Gustav and Anton and also then we have the the before period in in the second part with his parents and yeah so it's about how Anton and Gustav's kind of their their friendship ebbs and flows and they come together and move apart and and it's it's about how that develops and how that ends up and it kind of it brings full circle some of the things that happened in the first two sections and it does so in a really really clever brilliant way but I don't want to say anything more about it because that will be spoilery and we don't want that but this was a great great book and like I said should have been on my top books of 2017 in fact it was on my top books of 17 but so the final book that I read in 2017 was The Lonely City by Olivia Lang which is a non-fiction collection of essays about loneliness particularly in cities and more specifically about artists and some very famous artists as well some who were famous during their lifetimes and some who were only discovered to be brilliant geniuses of art after their deaths so some very famous ones like Andy Warhol and some not so famous ones so I found myself gravitating towards the computer to look up some of these artists as I was going and there are visual artists um, musicians writers all sorts in there um, but yeah it's, it's how they dealt with loneliness in their art and also in their lives woven in there is this, this section of Olivia Lang's own life and her struggles with loneliness in the city and how she kind of equates them to these artistic figures from history so yeah it's a, it's a very interesting sociological study very well written very easy to read um, some of the subject matter is not easy to read but um, you know it's, it's very well written so those were the books that I read in December of 2017 have you read any of these let me know down in the comments if not what was your favorite book of December 2017 I'd love to know as always thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye